Hello, 2019. Welcome, everyone. My name is Bruce Schwartz. I'm in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. 14-inch telescope. We're looking at some close-ups on the surface of the moon. I got some really nice close-ups here. Turn the moon every which way. We'll be looking at the Terminator line. And for those of you who don't know the Terminator line, I know many of you are annoyed hearing about it because <laughs> those following me, I'm always talking about it. It's that line of daylight and darkness that goes across the front side of the moon. When the moon changes shapes and size. When it looks like a banana, when that straight black line, when the moon is at half, it's the Terminator line that's progressing over it. And they say that that Terminator line is caused, obviously, the, res the reflection of the sun. So we're looking at the outer limits and check this out. There's some really cool um, details that appear when that Terminator line elevates and magnifies the surface. Because I want you all to know that we're not on the edge of the moon right now we're actually probably about a quarter way into the moon. So this is actually at the top going downwards. Here's the bottom of the side of the moon, veered up, by the way. You're going to see Tycho. Why do I veer it the other way? So that we can see the surface structuring right side up. Uh, turning different angles on the moon gives us different views of some of the structures. Sometimes flipping a structure upside down gives us a better view of the structure and understanding of it. Um, as we're progressing... Through the moon phase this month, January, I'm going to be doing a lot of uh, infrared camera outside. But of course, January last year, I was I was so upset because I had just gotten the, the I had just gotten the telescope, the 14 inch telescope. But um, you know, it was in November, I believe, or December, and then January came, February came along, 2017, uh, March came along, 2017. And I think that's when I first was able to get something up on the moon, um, like get some footage with the 14. Because sometimes we go many months without being able to see the moon, but especially during January. But this year, I was very lucky. Almost no snow on the ground. I think second snowstorm we got last night, I think two or three centimeters, maybe three or four centimeters on the ground. But it's really not that much as compared to the years before. I should show the, the video, next video, of the same date in January, we got 40 centimeters here. Uh, schools were closed for a day or two or one day and it was a weekend. So a, a drastic change in um, the weather over the world. Whether it be because of climate change, we, we can't deny that the weather is different. That's for sure. And it's drastically different. So when you see a video of somebody showing mountainous objects on the surface like this, most often... Um, it's not the full moon and they're along the Terminator line. A full moon itself, I was talking with Crow777 the other day when we did the interview and he said it before he even had a chance to mention it and it's just straight up truth. You, could, you know that the guy does do telescope. He says the full moon, didn't say it in these words, but I'm going to tell you what it really meant. It sucks because the full moon, we can't see anything. We have an excessively bright surface. This year, uh, in particularly the next uh, blood moon, is it a blood moon or uh, the next eclipse? Is it an eclipse that is coming? Will be the last one we will see till I believe 2022 or 2023. We'll have a couple of years that we're not going to go see, uh, we're not going to see again a complete eclipse. Here in Montreal on the 22nd and 23rd uh, of January, we should be seeing a complete lunar eclipse, and I'm going to be filming that and I'll get that up for you because um, when that happens, we see a lot of activity and don't forget these two planets, the moon and, and uh, sun, earth aligned. It gives us a lot of detailed views of the surrounding space and outer space. When that happens, it's different. Outer space is different. The constellations look different. They're a lot brighter. Sometimes they're a lot dimmer. And that sometimes gives us um, a better chance of getting a lot more footage. Like I was talking again with Crow the other day. We said on the full moon, uh, that's where he got the lunar wave, if I'm not mistaken, back in 2017. I hope I'm not mistaken uh, about the year. But he said, you know, 
we don't usually film the full moon because it's it's hard to clarify it after and him with his I think it's a 36 megapixel camera that he was he is using and wow well that must give him a lot of detail and yeah it gave him enough detail to see that lunar wave and I believe that the illumination of the surface itself probably helped him at that given time and point of seeing that lunar wave. This is Christmas footage by the way this was taken on uh, December 25th with a CGXL 1400 high definition telescope a 14 inch telescope 3910 focal length in millimeters of my telescope and that's how I film it I film it at 3910 millimeter millimeters of focal length because my DSLR does not have any zoom uh, or anything on it it's straight up so all the magnification that I'm doing and the zooming in and the uh, editing of adjusting the exposure etc that is what I do with the editor afterwards so while I'm filming the moon it doesn't look like this because I'm looking at a very gray moon I'm looking through my DSLR at the back so you know sitting down for me watching the moon it's not always pleasant because I don't see much as it's being filmed I did buy the wires I do have a big monitor to be able to transfer it onto the monitor at the same time but I'll be doing that more this summer because I'm not going to take the monitor out in January I was really lucky this year to get some good temperatures that is absolutely the truth because last year it was so darn cold and most of you that are here and were here last year remember how many times I mean, I was always doing the moon research. I always had a moon video up, but recent footage was hard to come by. In two years of doing this research, I was lucky enough to be able to accumulate a lot of proof that something, some type of being, human or alien, is definitely interacting uh, very close to the surface of the moon. The UFOs that I'm showing on the surface, well, how high up off the surface exactly are they? That I may never know. But we know that they are so close to the surface, the UFOs that I am seeing, that they are creating a shadow on the surface, as we often see um, the shadow beside the UFOs that I'm showing. So those just arriving to the channel, there's a lot to check out. You can look back many videos and uh, there's always new findings. And recently I've been examining the explosions on the surface of the moon. Yes, on the near side of Earth, there are explosions happening, whether it be... Like we don't know what they are. I'm saying explosions. Maybe they're just bright flashes of light. Someone was saying, could it be just the planet, the moon turning around in space and we're seeing this interaction of, of uh, uh, you know, electrons or whatever. Yeah, I'm not going to roll it out, but we're still seeing something. And the flashes I'm seeing uh, are on the edge of the Terminator line, the last that I saw, and it was like literally just coming out of a cave. And I say cave because it looked like a dark entrance. Look at the explosion videos and you'll see it's coming off of a ledge, a high rising ledge, many thousands of feet on the surface of the moon. And, you know, this is going on all the time. The only way I'm able to see that occur is by slowing down my footage drastically. It's not fun. No, it's not fun sitting watching footage for three hours and only finding a little flash of light. But by doing it, <laughs> we're finding the proof. I have definitely found a simple enough way of being able to view the surface, both through x-ray filtering and just zooming up close to the surface and slowing things down. At times, we're seeing uh, beautiful, beautiful details on the surface, and they're between those clearings of either natural or unnatural cloud cover that we are seeing. Uh, don't let anyone tell you otherwise. The, the surface of the moon is definitely filled with a type of cloud smoke or haze whether it be naturally producing itself some say it could be the interior of the moon that uh, there's an atmosphere in there and it's seeping out or some are saying they're mining if they're working inside and and that smoke is seeping out i think that these are all very healthy and logical way of being able to find out what's up there you know exactly what we're seeing look at this mysterious area where it almost looks like it has this uh, long bridge like object going into the the surface of the moon right here and it also continues off all along the edge of the terminator line and again that terminator line is showing us that 
um, detail. It has the same reflectivity as the surface, most of the objects. And unless that Terminator line is there, we're not going to see them. want to thank again everyone for the great support that you've all given this channel and for being here and the contributions. Christina Garal, Malpertris, merci. Thanks so much. Char Gordon, another thanks. Mike Allen, thanks again, bro. And I, I got your name up on this video, Mike Allen. Thanks so much, everyone, for the generous support.